Hey everybody, it's JP here. I'm down in Pasadena. We're doing a little walkabout with the new Sony a6700. A lot of great features with this camera. Let's explore them. Let's see how it works. Let's see some images. And let's just see exactly what's new on the new a6700. So let's talk about some of the general specs of the a6700. It's a 26 megapixel APS-C sensor. It's got that new Bions XR processor with the dedicated AI engine, processing engine. It shoots 11 frames per second, which is pretty much the same as the A6600, but it does shoot 11 frames a second both in mechanical and electronic shutter, which means you can get a faster shutter speed in that electronic shutter. For autofocus, it has 759 autofocus points, which means it's covering about 80, about 93% of the sensor. That's more than the A6600. So it gives you great coverage of the sensor with regards to autofocus. The autofocus we're gonna test and look at today, and my experience with it so far is that it is very good, as Sony has been for quite some time now. So let's get out and shoot with this camera. Let's see exactly what it's got. Let's take a look at what's new. What does this camera have that the A6600 did not? One of the most significant upgrades, I think, on the A6700 is the front dial. It's being able to control uh, different features of your camera with that front finger is extremely useful and has been needed. In this price range, it's very common, so I think that's really a great step on this camera to have that front dial. Also, I love the new menu system. I love the fact that it really looks more like the A7R5, which I shoot on, and I love that. So the menu system is really easy to navigate and to use, and I think that's a, those two things are a huge upgrade with this camera, and probably two of the features that I think really are moving it up to the next level. So the A6700 comes in at $1,399. It is very much, even though it's in the same category as like a Canon R7, it is very much its own style of camera. It's a very compact camera body, as you know from the whole A6, uh, A6000 series. So in that, there are some compromises. Uh, adding that wheel in the front has certainly helped. You have a very small EVF off to the side. I get used to that pretty quickly after I've used it for just a little bit here this morning. I'm very, it's very comfortable to me. I miss a spot for my little finger right here, but pretty soon I find myself supporting the camera underneath with that finger and it becomes very natural to me after a few seconds, after a few minutes, so. So the camera really does work, and it, keeping it that small, streamlined body that you can carry with you, do street photography, travel photography, I think that makes this a unique camera. I'm shooting the 16 to 55, it's a 2.8 lens on here from Sony, and that lens is, is made for the APS-C sensor. It's actually a great lens with, and a great walk-around lens uh, for this camera. I just love the compact, unique style of the A6000 series. But now the A6700 has got some features that just step it up and make it even more useful for me. So ergonomically, it's unique, but it works. Hi, I'm Rob Shanahan. What's in my SKB case? Magic. A couple of D5s, 2470, 70 to 200, a couple auxiliary lenses, batteries, cables, light trigger, and yes, a light meter. That's what's in my SKB case. So let's talk about the video aspects of the A6700. First off, it's a fully articulated screen. First one in this series of the 6000 series. That opens up a lot of options. It really becomes a, a kickoff point for if you want to do any kind of vlogging, if you want to use it in the corner. I mean, a lot of cinematic type of applications I use that for all the time. So that, that flip out screen is really valuable. It's built on the same sensor as the FX30, so there's a lot of great video uh, capabilities. So the A6700 shoots 4K up to 60P from a 6K. It's really uh, in this category. I think the R7 is subsampling, and so that's, this is a much higher picture quality a much better image. It does this up to 422 color space. It'll give you 120 frames a second at a 1.58 crop. So there is a significant crop, but it does give you the option to do 120 frames a second, which is really good. As we've seen in other Sony models, we have an XAVC HS, which is a great high quality. We've got an XAVC All-I, 
uh, which is going to require a faster, a V90 card in order to be able to record that. There's a lot of information there. Uh, most of these others will record on, on slower cards, but you're going to need a V90 card. It does have an XIV um, long GOP, which is an H264. You get S Cine Log, you get S Log 3, and you get HLG uh, profiles with this camera. So this camera really has great video specs. So the A6700 from the ZV-E1 gets the auto framing function. So the auto framing mode really works on a couple of principles. One, you have to be on a wide angle lens so that there is room to crop in and to move around. And I think it works better if you're moving up to the camera and away from the camera. If you're just walking side to side, a, a ways from the camera, it will crop in you, uh, into you and follow you side by side. So that does work. Uh, you have the responsiveness, either make it very slow, so it's, it feels very organic, or you can go very fast, so it pops in fast if you want more of a, you know, just a little more of a look that's a little more edgy. So there's some different settings you can go there from a small crop to a heavy crop, and you can play around with that. I think it's a fun mode, and if you're doing any kind of one person shooting, any kind of vlogging, uh, it's just a fun thing to work with. I think this will really progress in the future. I see a time where it may change the uh, focal length of the lens, which would really make it valuable rather than just an electronic crop. So auto framing, it's a fun thing to play with. In still mode on the A6700, you can do a soft skin effect. I'm seeing this more and more in so many different applications. Uh, news shows are using it. Uh, I mean, it's being done all the time, but it will just soften the skin just slightly. It's an algorithm that is made to soften the skin. Uh, here's an example of it at just the lowest mode. Well, here's without anything. Now here's an example at the lowest mode. Here's a medium mode, and there's the highest mode. Interestingly enough, as you look at these images, it softens the face, but not the neck. Some of us need the neck. How come not the neck? Anyway, I think it's just something interesting in the camera. You might use this in some applications. I would possibly use it on the lowest setting to just give us a little softer, uh, just a little softer skin in some situations. So there you have it, soft skin effect. For the stills autofocus test, we're gonna shoot at a thousandth of a second so the person walking is not blurring. Thousandth of a second, again, 2.8, so it has to stay right on, the focus has to stay right on the eye, and let's take a look at those images. So that's how we're gonna shoot our autofocus test for the still images. So we are shooting 11 frames a second as I walk up to the camera, and it's keeping me in focus every single one. Even with my glasses, even as I go to really close, there used to be a time in that transition period on the, some cameras you would lose the focus. Sony has become so good when it comes to the focus, and the A6700 A6, is no difference. Whether you're in uh, you know, eye mode on humans or animals, I was doing some pictures of my dog, uh, and that eye tracking on for the animal was perfect, was spot on. You got airplanes, you got cars, you got several different options there. I think this new camera, the A6700, has all of the advantages that you have with a lot of the other models with the Sony and really excels. I think in autofocus, it excels, there's no doubt about it. For all the autofocus tests, we're going to use a ND filter we're gonna shoot at 2.8 in video mode. So we're at 2.8, 1 50th of a second. And so we just see that autofocus have to work at 2.8. And that's gonna, with a variable ND, gonna keep us at 2.8. And that's gonna make it so it really has to stay right on us. So that's how we're gonna shoot the autofocus test for the video. So the A6700 combines all of the, uh, all of the algorithms, everything that Sony's been working on for autofocus forever. And in video mode, if I turn around, if I'm, Moving backwards, if I leave the frame, it'll pick me up again. When I come back in, it really is incredible. I can't, ha I can't say enough about the autofocus when it comes to the Sony cameras. The A6700 has all those algorithms and it's working perfectly. So you can see it as I move back and forth, it's pretty effective. So I think when it comes to autofocus, the, the A6700, this whole series of Sony cameras is pretty incredible. So let's look at some of the images. Some beautiful images this morning. Not as wonderful, those blue skies as I had wanted it to be. A little cloudy as we went out and shot this morning. But some great images. You know, the color is wonderful. Sony has always in the past perhaps been a little bit on the uh, greenish side. I don't see that anymore. I see the colors very clean. I think it's really good. It's very strong when it comes to blues and purples. Um, you don't get as quite as strong when it comes to the reds or oranges. 
uh, not certainly not compared to Canon you don't we're going to compare that in a comparison we're going to do tomorrow but still great images let's look at those images and just see how beautiful that color is So let's wrap this up. I think the A6700 is a major step forward in that 6000 series and certainly makes it very competitive with the other cameras that fall in this, whether it's from Fujifilm, from Canon. I think the A6700 really competes in that area, especially in video. It is way and above in a lot of the video aspects that it has compared to those other cameras. It's taking 4K from a 6K. Uh, which is really wonderful. It's not subsampling, which the R7 does. So it really makes a big difference. I think this is a great video camera. It's that small form factor. If you love that small form factor, then this camera is extremely useful. Adding that wheel in the front has made it way more useful and quick to use with regards to settings. I do miss that uh, joystick in the back still, but uh, you can use the touch screen to be able to, uh, to, to do a lot of that maneuvering, but it's not near as easy. But overall, I think this is an incredible camera. I think that if you're in the Sony world, if you're in the A6000 range, you got one of those A6600, this is worth the step up. There's no doubt about it. If you're looking for something small, compact, you want to travel with, this is a great option. So take a look at the A6700. It's been fun shooting with it. It's been really fun. I think you'll enjoy the camera. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking.